Chair King? Here. Commissioner Stewart? Here. And Commissioner Tobacco? Here. Conflict of interest? Any planning commission member or staff who has a direct conflict of interest on any scheduled agenda item to be considered is to declare their conflict at this time. Seeing none, we move forward. Um, one, public comment. No action taken at this time. Public comment. <coughs> uh, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Planning Commission Board. Individual comments will be limited to a maximum of five minutes per person. Each person may speak once during this time. Cannot be, the time cannot be yielded to, yielded to another person. Under state law, matters presented during the Planning Commission period cannot be discussed <coughs> or acted upon. The record per for record purposes, state your name, city, residence, and please uh, make your comments directly to the Planning Commission Board. Seeing none, uh, moving forward to the consent calendar. All items listed on the consent calendar are to be acted upon by a single action of the Planning Commission Board unless otherwise requested by an individual Planning Commission member for special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendation of staff will be accepted and acted upon by roll call vote. Uh, we're on item 2.1, posting of the agenda. I could put them all into one. Yeah, let's go ahead. How, how are we going to do that? Are we going to note out each individual one that we've been doing, or are we going to consolidate it some kind of way? I would just say item 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3, and then do a roll call vote. That sounds good. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent calendar. As noted, items 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3. Chair McKinney? Yes. Vice Chair King? Yes. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Stewart? Yes. And Commissioner Tobacco? Yes. All right, moving forward to the <coughs> public hearing presentation. I'll pass that over to staff. Good evening, Commission. Uh, tonight, item 3.1 is a general plan amendment number 2017-01. The project consists of a general plan amendment to the city's land use element to allow for a specific plan land use designation to be established and designated on the general plan map in accordance with specific process and criteria. Tonight, we have uh, John Anderson of J.B. Anderson uh, doing a presentation for you. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, John Anderson, J.B. Anderson Land Use Planning, Contract Planner of the City of Riverbank, 139 South Stockton, uh, Ripon, California. Um, tonight's presentation is, uh, is a kind of a preemptive strike, so to speak. Um, we have a project that you're aware of, Crossroads West specific plan, that we're working with. Um, that project is in, in process. We're currently working on the environmental documents. The traffic study was... Um, just started recently, although we've done counts, actually, for months. Counts have been done, but we're, we finally got a hold of the, the appropriate model so we can move forward. But the, 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 the point that I'm trying to make here is that with the Crossroads West specific plan, the, the document 
the specific plan will be the guiding document that guides development in that area, uh, much like what happened with the Crossroads uh, project. Um, from a processing standpoint, if there are adjustments in um, the plan orientation or um, location on a map, yet those changes still comply with the overall plan and concept. So densities are the same, intensities are the same, the acreages of the various <laughs> land uses, commercial versus residential, as an example, are the same. You start changing those geographically, and to do that, you would have to go through a general plan change. <clears throat> so about a year ago, um, the project proponents for the Crossroads West project came forward to us with this potential problem. A specific plan is not unlike a general plan in that it, it's going to last some time. You know, Crossroads West is probably going to take 20 years or so to build up. So whatever we develop, you know, has got to be able to be flexible and be able to, you know, survive the test of time, so to speak. The idea came about to create a specific plan, general plan designation, which would correspond geographically with the boundaries of the specific plan. And that general plan designation would have specific criteria relative to what the expectations would be within that area. How many acres of commercial? How many acres of residential? How many acres of parks? How many acres of fire station site? How many acres are reserved for regional parks and, and the like? And then allowing the specific plan then to fill in all the details. So if there are changes to the specific plan, they're either handled administratively by staff or through modification, which will be presented to the Planning Commission and ultimately approved by the City Council. The specific plan is approved, denied, or modified, just like a zoning ordinance would be modified. So it has to go through the Planning Commission and ultimately be approved by the City Council. So. After having gone through that little bit of background, that's kind of the purpose of staff going through this general plan update to create a new general plan land use designation. So I've got a little PowerPoint I'm going to go through here. This is, of course, a recommendation um, by your body to the city council. Um, this is a, a new general plan designation. It was not part of the 2005 to 25 general plan land use element, which is why we're asking for a general plan amendment. Um, it would be, again, specific to uh, a general plan, uh, specific to a, a, a specific plan that the Planning Commission and the City Council would consider. So that would be the defined area. It wouldn't go outside of that. So in the analysis, um, the designation once established, you know, um, would facilitate comprehensive planning, um, would allow uh, integrated development, again, allowing the specific plan to govern those provisions, as well as describing how the infrastructure would be designed and, and laid out or oriented in order to serve those areas. It would promote mixed land uses, again, all governed by what the specific plan suggests goes within that area. And it also would accommodate changing market, condi market conditions. As you might imagine, over a 20-year period of time, you will have a changing market. And then, of course, to maintain effective land use controls and preserve the integrity of the overall project. And then, of course, you know, adjacent developments and impacts it may have on adjacent property values and or property, property owners. Um, uses. So the processing criteria would be pretty simple. It would be part of an adopted specific plan, be consistent with the city's annexation strategies, include, a, as I've described, a, a matrix of anticipated land uses with assumed development intensities and densities, which, by the way, is exactly what the general plan land use designations give us in general. <coughs> If we had an, a low density uh, general plan designation, it tells us what the density can be, and how many, you know, basically how many homes, the orientation, this type of stuff. That would all have to be defined in a matrix, 
and that would be, uh, you know, we would have to be part of that specific plan designation on the property as defined. Um, again, it must follow the boundaries of the specific plan area. And then the other is that all, all previous general plan designations in that same area would be abandoned in favor of that specific land use designation. And then once a specific plan would be adopted, discretionary changes to land use patterns internal to the plan may be granted to the city without a need to do a general plan amendment. That's probably the biggest issue. Um, you know, general plan amendments, although this is your first one you've considered um, this year, you know, we're restricted to four general plan amendments a year, of which one we typically the city reserves themselves for some kind of city-initiated zone change or uh, city-initiated general plan change. Um, we've never really reached up against that limit, although you know, we do a pretty good job of managing that. So we leave options available for the, the general public and applicants if they'd want to bring a project through that doesn't necessarily comply with the general plan. But anyway, so it is, a, it is an extra step. So in essence, what we're trying to do here is eliminate, you know, bureaucracy and eliminate the extra step, but yet embracing the expectations of the general plan and embracing the expectations of the specific plan that, you know, is ultimately presented to us. So anytime we do a general plan amendment, there is a, a thing called SB, SB 18, which requires specific notification of the Native American Heritage Commission. So, uh, specific notices have to be sent out to Native American tribes of any proposed general plan amendment, and this is simply an acknowledgement that we've met those requirements. The notice period ends August 28th. This matter will, uh, in all likelihood, if the Planning Commission takes action on this tonight, would be presented to the City Council in September. So um, this is a this is a um, it more of an internal house cleaning type of issue. So there weren't really any specific um, sequel related concerns that would need to be addressed. Certainly, when we go to designate a piece of property specific plan, and we go to take action on a specific plan, like with a crossroads project, we'll have uh, an environmental document to uh, assist in our review and consideration of, of such an action. And in that case, with Crossroads West, we'll, we'll end up having a full-blown environmental impact report. So after having gone through that, staff's recommendation is that you uh, approve the resolution as presented and that, um, we, that you allow the creation of this specific plan, general plan designation in text, in text in the, in the general plan, and that you forward that recommendation off to the city council as part of your resolution. So um, I, I'd hope by now to give you more of an update on where we are with the Crossroads West specific plan, because that's kind of where this whole issue came up. But all I can tell you is that we're in the middle of an EIR, we're in the middle of an EIR uh, evaluation. Um, they still have more work to do on the specific plan, and uh, so we're there's several elements that are, that are working together to bring that document forward. I'm hopeful, um, this is July, I'm hopeful the first part of September that we'll have some kind of environmental document available for review in draft form. So the first document that's presented to you be a draft EIR, um, and then we'll have, a, we'll have an e draft EIR get circulated and then comments are received, and then we'll go through the preparation of the final EIR which in essence addresses the comments that are raised during the draft period, and then that along with the project itself is presented to you for an official action. So that's kind of where we are right now. So are there any questions about what staff is proposing as a general plan amendment to create a new general plan land use designation? Go ahead. I want to make really certain that what we are being asked to approve tonight is every time that that designation is going to be put to use, will that come back to the planning commission for approval? Yes. Yes. Because um, the, the very good question, what we're proposing today is just to change the language in the general plan to provide that as an opportunity. Currently, there's no property within the general plan boundaries that was adopted back in 2008 that has this designation. 
So in order for that designation to be applied to any property or properties, it has to be presented to the commission and ultimately approved by, by the city council. And quite frankly, that would be a general plan amendment because they're amending the adopted general plan assortment of land uses from whatever it is now to a specific plan, general plan designation. And they're not going to get this specific plan, general plan designation unless they have the underlying document, which is the specific plan. So then the specific plan really guides and locks all of the specific attributes as to what the development would look like and, and how it would uh, be assembled in phasing and financing and, and implementation. Sorry, I'm a little slow. No, no <coughs> problem. No problem. So the specific plan. So you're wanting to. What is the designation? <laughs> so the so the designation is specific plan. So you want that would a, be the designation. A, a specific piece of property and designate it a specific plan for that single piece of property as well. It would be it'd generally be more than one property. I can't imagine that you do a specific plan for one property. The the um, annexation strategies that they're part of the general plan. Um, uh, specifically define the acreages that we would consider under specific plan, and generally it's 200 to let's say 300 acres or so of land, and so that would is, that would be a, that would require an assemblage of several properties. So it wouldn't be one singular; it'd be several. Crossroads West project area com is comprised of. Yeah, I think. Yeah, 380, 390 acres actually, but I think it's comprised of, I want to say, eight individual properties within that area. And has that already been annexed? No, it has not. It has not. That's, that's a project that will come before you at some time. Now, probably not this year. I would hope next year at the latest. So your, your plan, this is something for the future, that when, when the future. you annex it, you'll be able to call it that designation and then control what happens within it. That's right. That's right. So so I said in the beginning, it's kind of a preemptive strike. We needed to provide this as a tool in our toolbox, in our general plan toolbox. So when we were to get, when in the future we were to consider a project, you know, we could consider the creation of a specific plan, general plan designation on this piece <coughs> of property based on what's already in our code. And what if it's not there? What, what, how if it's not there, it if, it's, if not. it's not there, that's a very good question. Um, then we rely on the general plan land use designations that we have. And in, in this area, it, it looks at um, low density residential, medium density residential, high density residential, commercial, and regional park. And then probably open space and some public uses as well. So those general plan designations will match to the best of their ability the land plan that they develop in the specific plan. As they go to develop, which is fine, which is fine. As they go to develop within that specific plan boundary, if they need to adjust things, and it could be minor, it could be a minor line that you only want to move 100 feet or something like that within 390 acres. You know, technically, that's a modification in the plan boundary, which would require a general plan change. So what we're trying to do here is to eliminate that extra step and let the implementation document, the specific plan, guide what is going to happen within that area. In other words, that's an open-ended designation. It's, an op it's kind of an open-ended de designation, not entirely, because in order to make that assignment, you know, it's going to be very specific as to what the expectations are, as I described, intensity and 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 density. But you're not going to go ahead until something gets developed. Right. So, so, so we're going to say, hey, you know, the expectation is we're going to get this many houses, and we're going to get <coughs> this this much in commercial, and we're going to get this much in parks, and we're going to get this much in public use areas like a fire station and and schools and that type of thing that you would expect. How you orient in, orient those within your plan. I'm saying that the specific plan governs it. That's what govern. That's your governing tool. So if you need to make modifications to the specific plan, you not have to go back and do a general plan change. And it sounds like you can use the percentages for these specific plans. I mean, is that kind of a fluid thing, like 20% for 
controversial 30% for parks. I mean, is that going to be a fluid thing or? Um, um, well, I'm not sure I completely understand the question. The, the existing general plan designations for this area that I've referenced, because this is really the first one that you guys would be considering, Crossroads West specific plan, the, the land use assumptions that were made by the general plan update team and ultimately adopted by the council, for the most part, those densities and intensities are being implemented by this plan that we're working on now. They're being implemented by that. Um, the, the specific plan, general plan designation, would allow them the ability to kind of shift those land uses around within the defined boundary, okay, to accommodate market changes, whatever, as long as they continue to meet the goals and objectives that are defined in that matrix. Yep. In that road. Like it, 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 does, it does provide <laughs> flexibility as long as they meet the goal and, the goal and objectives. That's, that's, that's what is truly interesting about the market. It's going to be a market-driven specific plan. Well, um, everything's, everything we do is pretty much market-driven. Um, um, <coughs> there's, there's some things that we're asking these developers to do that I don't think they think the market can support, but they're, they're more community-related issues. That we're dealing with, um, so not all of it is market related. I mean, it's you know, there's um, one of the issues we're dealing with, for example, is is parks. We want to make sure that w w in the end of the day, we end up with parks that are usable. They'd like to be able to use the park to also accom accommodate some of their storm drain related concerns, and uh, we've been very consistent in our discussions with the developers about. That's fine, but as long as we end up with usable park at the end of the day and we don't end up with a piece of ground that really was designated with the intent for storm drain and, oh, by the way, it's going to be used for park, we want to make sure that up front it'll be, if it's going to be park, it, it has, you know, park-related features. So they're, they're acceptable to us and meet the community's needs. So they're not really, they're not really liking that, but that's the way it is. So, uh, John, you, you had mentioned that. Uh, we we n know or we know something about this uh, crossroads west, and I have to say I've been on the commission just a year and a half, and I've heard rumors, but I've never heard any information about it. Okay, let me and let me uh, that that that's very that's very good. Let me let me tell you where um, crossroads west specific plan boundaries are now. Um, it is about a 390 acre piece of property. I don't have a map. I'd show you a map, sorry. Um, 390 acres, it's the land that is directly west of Oakdale Road. It is north of, um, north of Clarabelle and south of the MID main lateral, main lateral, main lateral, which is north of Morrell. And then the western boundary of the plan area is about halfway between Oakdale and Coffee. Oakdale and Coffee. So it occupies um, the tulip farm up front. Mm -hmm. It occupies the Machado Dairy, which is both north and south of Crawford Road. And also occupies the land north of Morrell. So that's, that's the planning area that we're working on right now. Okay. And, and um, I, I can see, because you have the shopping center on the other side, I can see that that would be a natural expansion of that. Um, but this, if this is approved tonight, uh, it's not just for that. Nope. This covers the whole area of Riverbank, the city of Riverbank, and then everything that we bring into the city after that. That's right. So it basically changes our general plan that we have and allows it to be uh, worked a different way. You it, might it, it, al it allows for... Um, specific areas under specific projects to be able to use this designation as a tool so to move forward. So why wouldn't the city ask for approval for this, for that one development and not the rest of the city? Because, you know, I'm just looking at, at that. That's a thing that we're trying to do. Why shouldn't they just approve it for that and then 
I don't know so, later on with the city. But so I mean, let me let me let me go over something else here. Okay, so so the general plan that we have um, provides a general framework uh, and and puts out goals, policies, and implementation measures as to how the city, in this case, City of Riverbank, would be developed. And uh, the zoning, which applies to property when it's annexed, mm -hmm. okay, really acts as a regulatory tool to implement those goals and policies of the general plan that are more specific to that zone. Um, a specific plan, when it's ultimately adopted, is adopted as a, as a zone. So that is the guiding principles. That is the rules and regulations that you apply to. Um, in order to get a specific plan designation on any property, any property in the general plan boundary of the city of Riverbank, you would not need to first create that specific plan general plan designation, which is available for anybody, for any parcel. So it can't be just project specific. It has to be available to you know any anything any around. So, so actually, um, you know, we we're looking down the road. Um, you know, the city's got some ideas about doing some other projects in other areas of the city around the Riverbank Industrial Complex, as an example. And there's reasons for that, but as an as an opportunity for a job generating employment center, if and when that ever moves forward. Um, this type of designation may be appropriate for it, because it, or that piece of property or that project, because it'll allow for some flexibility and and how those land uses are assembled, and allow the specific plan then to be more specific and more governing. So or not. Okay. I mean, it, the bottom line is, you know, whatever property or properties are making a request to planning to use this general plan designation, they've got to prove out that it's it's worthy of the change from what general plan designations we have now to this new specific plan general plan designation to you and also to the city council. Nothing changes until the city council ultimately takes action to approve that designation on a defined uh, number of properties. Does that help? Okay. So it's something someone requests, not something the city imposes. Nope. The city will not impose it. It would be it would be based on request. Is a negative effect the city deny this? Um if you said no, negative effects is the, um that um and I, I think I've already described this, but um if there are changes in um a line or land use distribution within a defined specific plan in order to facilitate or to make those changes, the applicant, the city, the applicant would have to request, the city would have to modify the general plan. They have to modify the general plan land use designations according to what their current um, plan would be at that time, you know, in 20 years or whatever it might be. So I, I was on vacation and I just got back well, this morning, actually. And um, I didn't notice this until I think it was Thursday. And I read through it, and to me, it's very, very difficult to understand for me. Um, my question is why is, is why it seems like we should have had some training or some education on this so we could understand what this is all about, how it works, things, but to just to come here tonight and make a decision is difficult. Well, let's, um, we could use this as training. I don't have, there's no rush. There's no rush on this. You guys want to postpone it because you want to think about it. You want to have more conversation either here in public hearing or with staff. I don't have a problem with that. There's no, we're, not, we're not trying to, we're not trying to rush anything through. That, it, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a concept that we see that, that, that needs to get resolved at some point and we, we thought this was a good way of trying to resolve it, you know, seeing potential problems down the line. Um, I, can, I can tell you I'm involved in a couple other large master plan communities in Lathrop, as an example. And, you know, these are plans that have been around 20 years already. And 
this kind of stuff is coming up. And it's the same response where an applicant's wanting to adjust a line, not increase the amount of commercial, not increase the amount of residential, not increase really any, any anything, really, but they're moving a line. And because they want to move a line, they've got to go through this general plan process, which means you know, notifications, Native Indian tribes. There's a whole host of other things that we have to do as planners to process so you could consider a general plan change. So it's, it's, this it is not a simple process. So that's why we felt, you know, it was a little bit uh, proactive, if you will, for us to present this to you ahead of any consideration of the Crossroads West Pacific Plan area. And I understand if you guys you guys, uh, have more questions or you want more feedback on it, I, I, that's great. I mean, that's why we're here. John, I have an analogy that might help. Okay, so if you think of the current general plan area, this 390 acres, say, as a crazy quilt, where you have yellow patches, red, green, blue, that all represent different housing densities or different commercial areas, and those are set by the general plan. But if you do an over, you know, like a, a specific plan, kind of like an overlay on top of it, then the developer can kind of move those pieces around without coming back to the city every time to say, can I move this piece, can I move this piece? They have the flexibility to make the layout of the project I, I just, I understand work for them. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Betty's question, I'd also like, if you can, I'd like to see a map of the city um, showing projects that would actually be potential users of this. Well, the only one that I'm aware of right now Joan would be the Crossroads West Pacific Plan area, which I've already described, the 390 acres. So that would, that would be it. Nothing, none of that property would be used for residential? No, nope, not at this point. Not at this point. Because quite frankly, I mean, if it's a city-initiated project, the city doesn't have the funds to move forward with it. So, you know, what we're talking about here is an applicant-driven application. And um, anyway. Um, so is this something, uh, so other cities are using this? Yes. Okay, so what I, I think what I see, I think what we probably need some education on it is, is it's why, why do we need it here in the city and what brought it along? What brought it up? Because it looks like it's going to, it, it allows the developer to bypass our, uh, our ability to exercise the general and specific plan as, you know, as needed when, uh, a developer wants to do something outside of what was generally planned. Because, of course, we do want to do a sequel or whatnot, but it also affects values of property. It, it affects your neighbors. It, it, it affects how the city is actually divided up. If a developer can come in and say, okay, well, I got a rectangle shape, so now I want to change it to an octagon shape, and I don't have to go before the planning commission because it allows me to do that under this new designation. Right. Well, um, it's not entirely true. Um, it, it, you're not again. You're not bypassing the process to make modifications. They would still have to reach conformity to the specific plan. If the conformity to the specific plan cannot be found by staff, then that goes to the commission and ultimately to the city council to uh, as a modification, as an amendment to the specific plan, which is not a general plan change. Okay, that's the that's the word. So that, that's designation. what we're cutting out. We're cutting out this, the extra step of doing a general plan change. Do you have the ability through public hearing setting to analyze and evaluate a change to the adopted specific plan? Absolutely, absolutely. That's not being that's not being eliminated. Is there, is there money involved? Does the extra step take money? Yes, more application fees, more time. Time and money. So it's saving the, devel the developer money? Could, yes. Could conceivably save the money and help uh, with and help reduce risk. So anytime they ask for something, it's risk on their, their behalf. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind if we could have some education because there are people, when I, I was actually involved in the general plan when they, parts of it, and then I had to move. But, um, um, I don't, there are people here that I figure that I'm their, I'm, I'm the representative here on this commission, and I would like to talk to some people and see, get their input, not just 
uh, here from in this meeting, but get their input and what they think on it, and then get more education. So I know this, you know. So, so um, I wrote down some notes here. Sounds like you guys want to have, you want to continue. This is what I'm hearing. You want to continue this, and you want feedback from staff as to why we're doing this, um, which cities may have already adopted a specific plan, general plan designation, and then who is bringing this up, who is bringing this up. And if there's anything else that you can think of that you want us to analyze, let us know. The benefits in the future. Benefits. And features, okay. And if there's anything else that you think that we need to, you know, present back to you, that's fine too. Let us know, email or call Don or let her know. It's not a problem. We're not trying to rush this thing through. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's fine. We're, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have to. You don't have to do this. I'm just. Seeing that, you know, because it's a 390-acre project, there's going to be some, I, I know for a fact, there's going to be some changes coming down the line. I, and, I, and I personally could see, and I know you said it's good to do the whole, whole area, but I could personally see, you know, approving it for that, going through that, and put it, approving it for that development, seeing how it works. Mm -hmm. And if it works, then we can expand it to the whole city. Again, again that's, that's something that... Um, you're going to take on a case by case basis because to change, because to, to change a general plan designation on a defined piece of property takes an application, takes an action by you, and takes an action by the city council, because it, it it would be processed as a general plan amendment, mm -hmm. similar to what we're doing tonight. Yeah, but tonight we're set up process. But tonight we're talking process. Correct. Is there a time frame when they anticipate they would be annexing that property? Well, um, you know, it's one of those projects that we thought that we'd be further along than we are. So, um, quite frankly, you know, we're we're not where we need to be. So we're, it'll be. I, I think it'll probably be going to be in sometime next year. You say annexation. I'm <coughs> when you say that, I'm saying consideration by you of a plan with environmental backup. You know, annexation is the next step after council takes action because we physically have to file an application with Stanislaus Lapko and you know, there's a whole notification and hearing process there. Another thing I'm not too clear about is the uh, the Native American thing that's just 18. Yeah. What, what, what is that actually? It's, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Senate bill that was, that was uh, passed um, and, and requires us, actually just recently passed, requires us for any general plan change to make specific notifications, so that's what we're required to do. Reservation of property or something? Well, I think the idea is that they felt that they were being bypassed by local governments when they were doing general plan changes, and they just wanted to make sure that they're not being bypassed and they're Why being specifically be notified. I'm sorry? Why would they need to be included? I, it's, we're just complying with state law. Okay. There's many things that the state passes on to us that we may not necessarily understand, but <laughs> we're required to comply with. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you don't vote, right? <laughs> Sometimes you vote and still you end up with things like this. Okay. All right. So I would open it to public to the public. Sure. Okay, we're going to open it up for public uh, what, public discussion or public comment. So the floor is open for any public comment. So seeing none. You want to make a comment on this? Yeah. Okay. 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 See, now we're going to close the floor, right? For public comment. So, do we need to make a motion to postpone this? To continue it. I'll, I'll make a motion that we continue item 3.1, general plan amendment number 20, 17 01 to August 15th. August 15th. I'd like, I'd like to make an addendum to that motion, and that is that the commission gets tr uh, education and training from city staff about this prior to that meeting. Is that 
I, I'm not sure what you're asking for. Uh, like some type of a workshop or something so yeah. that we can understand exactly what's the intricate knowledge of this particular Do designation because no one, it, it seems to me it's a, it's a designation you can have and, and it, it's like, it's neutral. I can understand it. It's neutral because you, you haven't determined what you're going to do with it. And then when you get ready to do something with it, the general plan or the specific plan is, is what you're going to be using in order to determine what you're going to do with it. I understand that. But um, we don't understand. I know I don't understand why they even need it then. Yeah, and I, I think when I was involved in the general plan, there was a lot of involvement of citizens. There were meetings. We talked about things. And they came up with a final plan. So we put a lot of work into it. And now I'm being asked to approve an amendment to the general plan that I think really takes over the general plan. And it's a new way of, of, uh, of uh, going forward, of changes. And, and, that, and I don't understand it, how it works or that. It's hard to, for, it was hard for me to read this and understand what, you know, what happened. So um, uh, it's just my wish as a planning commissioner to learn more about this before I'm asked to make a decision. Because if I couldn't learn more about it, I'd have to vote no. To be utilized. Right. I, I, I guess my question is, you want a special meeting to have a workshop? Do you want materials that we can get you through email? What is it you're asking it, that you would like? What if we utilize the August meeting to sometime within that? maybe for an additional presentation that might clear things up and in between time we can have some email information sent to us and we could vote on it in September instead of August. So have Something August more as a workshop? Yeah. I don't have a lot of time in between to come back. So maybe stuff. slides, presentation or something, something, something tangible. Uh, it shouldn't take long um, for us to get somewhat educated on, like, like, like you said, we, we, we spend a lot of time on putting the, Plan, the plans together and then to make something that's going to override all of that. You know, we just need to know. I'm, I'm sure it's a reason why other cities are doing it, but we, we you know, would like to know it as well. And I think it was Commissioner Tobacco was talking about. I was involved. Like I, I chaired the commission during that whole general plan workup, and there was a great deal of public involvement, many meetings. <laughs> And um, it was a hard-fought battle to get that general plan accepted. So I would tread very lightly when it comes to anything that would initiate the illusion of changing it. So I, I want to make sure that we know exactly what it is that we're doing. Okay. Okay, so. So what's the motion? So I would say <laughs> continue until August 15th as a workshop and training. Right. And then maybe bring it up for vote in September. Does that work? Yeah. So I'll second that motion. Second that motion. She writes it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So, so uh, I understand you want a workshop. I got that. Um, this is a public hearing item. It is a notice public hearing item. So if your intent is to deliberate and take action on this in September, I think whatever motion you guys adopt tonight needs to reference that. So we don't have to go back out and re-notice. So your intent is workshop in August and then to consider this and, and I would soon reopen the public hearing in the, at the September Planning Commission meeting for consideration. Yeah. I think that, that, needs to be, that, needs, needs be, that needs to be part of your motion, please. <laughs> to include that. Okay, so I would like to make a motion that item 3.1, general plan amendment, um, include the August Planning Commission meeting for a workshop purpose, and we will vote on it, take action on it in the September meeting. I'll second that. <laughs> so is that close enough? <laughs> okay, uh, Chair McKinney? Yes. Vice Chair King? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? And Commissioner Tobacco. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. 
Um, we move forward here. So we passed that already, right? And 3.1 passed. So we're on item four, planning commission comments, information only. Any comments from the planning commission? I have to, I do have to say I went to the LASCO uh, training and it was very good. I didn't realize uh, all the things involved and it was actually a training put on by their staff for the members. And not every member was there, but it was very interesting to listen to what their job is. So. Anything else? I do have, I have a question. I know that I've asked Doc this once before, but I'm not quite sure which department in the city would be the the ones who worry about this. And I mean worry about it. The condition of some of the houses in the city are. It's, it's really bad, and I know that it's going to start affecting property values. So I'm really wondering what, if anything, the city can do about this. Um, I have the code book, but it's this thick, and I don't want to read it if there is a department that could actually take some action about this. I mean, it does, I don't think it, it depends on which area of the city you go to. You're going to see more than a few lawns that look terrible, houses are, are just not in good repair, and I know it's going to start affecting property values in the city, which of course means a lowering of revenue to the city. So what can we do about it? Well, that would be our code enforcement, and currently we have one code enforcement officer, and they're involved in weeds and vehicle abatements at this time. So um, while we do realize that is a problem, you can only spread staff so far. Um, we do have a couple of houses that I know about that have been um, like boarded up, that type of thing where people are coming forward now and wanting to either demo them and build a house there or uh, rehab the house. So you know, we do have some progress going on, but um, it, it's just a lot of work to, to get to that point where you um, you know, reach outreach to banks that maybe have something in foreclosure or trying to find landlords or property owners that live out of state or even out of the country. It's just a very laborious process, and, and we've been doing the best that we can, but it... it I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you are. My, I think my question would be more than that. Are, are there city codes against this type of, of behavior within the city? I mean, are there codes in place that require people to maintain their property. I mean, the CCNRs after the first few years, they're, they're pretty much useless after the, after the first property owner. So that's really no protection at all. So are there any city codes that, that offer protection to them? Well, I would say there's one in the weeds where if they're over a certain height, but there's really nothing against a dead lawn. Well, but when we do approve projects, I'm sure this is past practice as well, we always put conditions of approval that state that you know the property should be maintained and plants um, uh, cared for and living condition and um, there are some you know nuisance regulations that we can follow up on but um, you know overall it's it's just yeah, laborious. There, there are state law provisions for the city to get uh, what's called a nuisance abatement order. Um, again, it's time consuming. It requires um, oftentimes requires. Um, assistance by the city attorney, so there's costs involved, and then the main way to recover those costs is by charging it on the property owner to pay for that abatement, and if they don't pay for the abatement, then it becomes a special tax lien, and then the tax lien gets paid either through the next sale or through a tax sale. So it's usually, um, you know, we saw more activity in this area during the foreclosure crisis when you had a lot of abandoned properties and it really became an issue of, of blight. And so it's, like Donna mentioned, it's a, it's a, it requires a kind of a determination of when does it make sense to spend those costs because the city won't recover those costs sometimes for 
three to five years um, for nuisance abatement. So that's the general overview. There's provisions under state law to to take action, but it's um, it's it's um, a pretty time-consuming process. I'm just going to come. In interestingly, um, sometimes natural events can speed up that process. I was recently back in the Midwest and had noticed in my old hometown where I hadn't been for a while, all the houses had new roofs and new siding and their yards looked wonderful and it was all due to severe hailstorms that destroyed everything and so <laughs> insurance came in. <laughs> And fix it all up, and the yeah, town looked great. Speed <laughs> up the process. Yeah. Any other comments? No? Okay, seeing none. Item five, none. Staff. Okay, staff comment. Item seven point one. Planning commission recruitment. Okay, the uh, planning commission recruitment is um, uh, held uh, with the city clerk's office. And uh, she informed me today that um, so far with this recruitment that we have had um, one application. So I think it's important for people to, you know, think about coming forward and, and serving the community. And um, the, the recruitment is going to uh, remain open until we get um, a good pool of applicants. Uh, we were hoping to fill this position right away so we don't end up in two, two ties. Um, that's that's never good uh, for the process, um, but if we can, you know, get a, a really good pool, pool of people, uh, we'll be able to use this pool for, um, uh, you know, in December as well when some of your positions become available if if you choose not to, you know, uh, throw your hat in the ring again. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I just like to ask the community to, you know, think seriously. It's one day. Um, and a little bit of reading per month, and sometimes a lot of reading, <laughs> but um, you know, a one a commitment of one meeting a month. I, I noticed in the in the paper the announcement for tonight's meeting had a comment with it that, that you were there was an open position and you were looking for that. So I think that was good to see that in there. So. And I think it's been posted on social media sites as well, like our uh, you know River Bay. Facebook page and I believe our um, uh, city uh, website as well has all the information if folks out there are interested or they're always welcome to call me as as well and I'll try to get them in touch with the city clerk and get them any information that they need to help them make a decision. Okay and then um, item 7.2, um, uh, 209 concepts, the, the one that you worked the project you worked with earlier this year uh, for the cars being parked outside over 24 hours, the, the accumulation of trash, and um, he has moved his business out. Um, it's currently vacant. The landlord has been cleaning up what remains in there, and we've had a gentleman come forward and ask about the site to do body paint. So I stood with him at the counter and, and discussed with him um, everything that the Planning Commission um, has gone through the last couple of months with this site and what the expectations would be if he were to move in there. And uh, so we'll see what happens. Next is uh, um, well, uh, upcoming meeting agenda items, or is that going to change to reflect? Okay. And... Um, I guess we item number eight. Um, since we have another, no other questions, uh, meeting adjourned.